as a tank and has a lot of taunts and stuff that'll keep enemies off of you, um, which is extremely helpful in this. Uh, yeah, and he he's designed a he's basically designed a tank for glass cannons like the wizard or um, you know less durable characters like the. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the demon hunter that I am right now. Alright, so we taking care of things in town. On that note, I'm going to take a short two-minute break. I will see you all in exactly two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave that computer. Go check Facebook. Oh my god, I'm back! Oh, everything is so different! Little boy in the chat, what year is it? What year is it? Where am I? Everything, there's, there's, it's stuff. I don't know, I'm just talking out my ass. Okay, uh, let's continue in the Defiled Crypt, see if we can't actually find our way to the goddamn, uh, crown yet. Let's see, burn it down, burn it down. I like that I've increased the difficulty and it's actually kind of tuned everything to... Oh yeah, this wasn't it either. I like that I've increased the difficulty and it's tuned everything uh, to still be at my level. So that even though I jumped in, I'm not one-shotting everything even though the difficulty is only slightly harder. It's really good. It's It definitely helps the game stay fun. And so I've cleared out two of these already. Hopefully I don't have to clear up every single one in order to find the one I need to be in. There's no there's no secrets or no real indication that they give you to kind of say, hey, this is the one you need to go to. Oh, there are three. I've had to do every single one that's unlocked this friggin' round match mission thing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna defile that crypt, baby. Run away! Burn him down! I like that when I use my uh, uh, little bomb trap, it it goes right over to where they are, so I don't have to like put it directly in front of me or anything like that. I also like that Cormac the Templar is also actively blocking them from being able to get to me. That's good. That's good. That's what I made you for. Yeah. Yeah, burn them down. Yeah, Brick Squad. Oh, he's just stuck, too. Like, he's trying to get to me. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a plan for something important. What do we got? Plan Kane's Fate. Oh, that's a really good, that's a really good uh, weapon for, or not a really good weapon. You do not meet the artisan level requirement for this item. I guess we're going to have to go change that. Um, that is an extremely good um, item combination that you can use for leveling because when you equip certain numbers in the set it'll give you experience. Um, I guess I'll go a little bit into the item uh, types in this game or the item rarity levels. You've got gray items which are broken or bad items. You've got white items which are normal. Blues which are magic. Yellows which are rare. Orange which are legendary. Um, and then you have green ones, which are legendary set items, which means that the item that you get... There we go. Um, 
the items that you get from that are good legendary items, but you get increased bonuses for equipping them in a set. So if I equip up to... Here, I'll actually show you here with... Uh, here we go. Let's look. Let's look at this one here. Um, these are set gloves, and you get additional bonuses for increasing or for equipping other items in the set. So, for instance, if you look down at the bottom, if you equip two items in the set, you get a two percent attack speed. If you equip three items in the set, you get a ten percent boost to your magic find and thirty percent additional experience, uh, which is really cool. And if you if you can craft something like that. Um, then you can give it to other characters that you play with and use it to increase their experience, helping you get through um, uh, levels faster, which will help you get to the end game content faster. Um, which is a really interesting, not really interesting, it's a really cool way to once again increase replay value. They did a thing like that in World of Warcraft where you could get um, items that would bind to your account that you could send between uh, between your characters that would allow you to level your characters faster. So if you're in a guild and you're like, oh, well, we have a lot of, you know, damage dealers, but we need a tank, I can level this tank really quick and, oh, look, here, uh, we've bought this item that'll allow me to level really fast so that I can grind through the levels and, and get to where I need to be to play with my friends a lot faster. Uh... And there's a huge multiplayer component to this game. If Tony ever decides to get a goddamn Xbox One, yeah, I'm talking to you, Tony. If you ever decide to get a friggin' Xbox One and you get this, you'll be able to do your hardcore run with me. You'll be able to get items that will allow you to level up a lot faster and get up to my level if you get on my level boy. Um, let's do our little shooting stuff. There we go. Um... That way I'm not running around with, like, you know, a hardcore character who's 20 levels lower than me trying to co-op with him when he has to kind of sit back and be like, No, it hurts! Because if your hardcore character dies, I mean, he's gone. And the last thing you want is to be playing with somebody, and then their guy dies, and they have to, like, re-roll a whole new character in order to come play with you again. I am on your level. Haven't you seen my movies? Hey, we found it. Well, of course we found it. It's the last goddamn one. I have a feeling that the crown is nearby. The Chancellor kept it safe for many years. A noble act. Uh, this game is also really cool because it gives you a lot of backstory on stuff that you kind of learned about or were teased about in the uh, first two Diablo games. Specifically the Skeleton... Oh, Jesus. Run away! Specifically the Skeleton King, King and how he relates to the story of the first couple games. Uh, they kind of retconned it for this one. But in the second game, you're chasing after a Dark Wanderer who is a person who's possessed by the soul of Diablo. And you find out in this game that he was actually... The Dark Wanderer was the hero um, from the first game uh, who defeated Diablo, who was also just a nameless dude. Um, and he is actually Aiden, the son of the Skeleton King, um, who was more or less manipulated into uh, summoning Diablo or creating ideal conditions for Diablo, the Lord of, one of the Lords of Hell, to be summoned. Burn them all down! There we go. Oh, Jesus Christ, they spawned the boss. Oh, I hit the A button in the wrong place. I'm an idiot. I need an adult. I don't really need an adult, but... An adult would help. Actually, he's not too bad. As a uh, mid-level mini-boss, he's not too hard to get rid of. See, we just did it there. Alright, so here, once you get that crown, would actually the per be the first place where you would get a town portal, which is what I, I've been using to move around here between town and uh, whatever dungeon I'm in. Oh, but I didn't grab the friggin'... Damn it, I'm stupid. 
I'm stupid. Yes, I am on your level, Tony. Haven't you seen my movies? You found the crown. Truth be told, I've seen my movies. My movies are great. Ah, it needs repair. Should be no problem. Schindler's Fist. Burp -er -burp -er -er. It's good to work again. Yeah, it is good for you to work again, yeah. even though you've been working for you me the whole the time. Was placed upon the Black King's head. <laughs> I need something more than making spades to occupy. So this is this is the point in the game where you would actually get um, the damn friggin' uh, blacksmith who would you know do the thing for you and stuff and junk. So this is the point where you'd actually get him and start being able to use him to craft items and train and stuff like that. To reach the skeleton king. Ah, at last. With it, you can unlock the sealed door in the room where you rescued me. Kane, you're pretty. The royal crypts. I think it's super cool we'll that they included him in this game. I figured, you know, since this game came out... The, the second game with Decker Kane in it came out in 2001. Destroyed, and this came out in, what, 2012, 2013? 2013, I think, yeah. So, 12 years later, they were still able to get the same guy to do the voice stuff? I mean, that's, that's friggin' awesome. That's awesome. It's awesome. All right. So just a heads up for everybody watching the stream. Um, this first session, we're going to go until we defeat the Skeleton King here. Um, and then from there, we're going to uh, head out and then um, tune in to our 9.30 p.m. stream. What? Did I just walk over a corpse and he dropped the legendary chest piece? That, that kicks a little ass. Let's see, what do we got? Aquila Curious. Got a socket. 11% from gold. Gold from monsters, ranged and melee attackers. Okay, so I'm going to need to put our... Uh, do we have any... Any other gems we can socket? We've got a... Uh, Jesus. Well, I lost a little attack there, but I've got this pretty golden boob grab harness and these neon gold green, neon green pants. So I look just absolutely gaudy. I look like a Barbie or a Bratz doll right now. I look like a Bratz doll. Look at me. Let me spin around. Boop. That'll help me. Um... When we look, yay, level 21. When we look at um, items to make us better or worse here, we're not really looking at the stats so much. Uh, they did a really cool thing in this where they give you um, three different main stats to look at. One is attack, one is defense, and the other one is um, health regeneration, uh, signified by the sword, the shield, and the two little plus signs under the three numbers right underneath my character. Um, and basically you're trying to increase those numbers and the other stats kind of don't matter, um, but they contribute, well, they matter, but you don't have to sit there and compare, you know, 300 different types of stats on a, on a, a weapon or a piece of armor. You can just look at it and say, okay, that increases my health regeneration, but it drops my defense. Do I want that trade off? How bad is the trade off? Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool in the sense that they they really simplify what you need to look at in order to know that you are or are not improving your character. Uh, marked for Death is a good skill. Wait a minute, which one is Marked for Death? Marked for Death is the Y attack. I might actually equip that if I start doing co-op stuff, because if I can mark an enemy for death, it does... Oh man, I can't shoot down the stairs. It does a ton more damage to the enemy. Uh, Jesus Christ, I kind of walked into a shitstorm. There we go, I got away from it. It increases the damage. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. It increases the damage done to enemies by a lot. Uh, so if you're, if you're playing through the game with other people, which actually increases the difficulty... Uh, significantly. It also increases your uh, rewards you can get, but it increases the difficulty significantly. Oh wow, I'm actually not doing very well here. Oh, this is trouble. 
um, 